Welcome to worship. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. We thank God for allowing us to be here out of our beds with a reasonable portion of health and strength. Amen and amen. Let us now rejoice in the Lord and worship him uh, this day. Amen. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. It was there by faith I received my son. And now I am happy all the day. Lord, out of blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy and divine word. There is 
worship the Lord in our giving as God has continually blessed us from one day to the next. We want to in turn take this moment now to give back to him out of the abundance of blessings that he supplies in our life. Amen. So we may take now those gifts that we have uh, purposed and planned in our hearts to give to place them in the offering today. Uh, and uh, those of you who are watching remotely, you also have an opportunity to share in giving uh, electronically uh, there at the website faithcbc.org. Uh, and you may also place your offering and tithes in the mail, send them to the address there on the screen, Lord Thirds. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for gifts and givers we pray your blessings upon them we pray loud lord that you would use it to your glory and the building of your kingdom in jesus name we pray amen i will bless the lord oh. Oh.
joys. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear.
those things of gratitude in our lives, that for which we are thankful and grateful for that you are doing as you continue to pour down favor in our lives and supply every one of our needs and put food on our table and clothes on our backs. Yes, Lord. All of this, Lord, we say thank you today. Thank you. We bless your holy name in this place. Thank you. We magnify you and give you glory and honor for who you are and what you're doing in our lives, Lord. For without you, we can do nothing, but with you, we can do all things. And so here we are once again. As we thank you, Lord, then we want to pause and share a prayer for each and every individual here. Yes, Lord. In this place, under the sound of my voice, Lord, we pray your blessings upon them. We ask, Lord, that you would give them favor and blessings in their lives, Lord, and supply what is needed, Lord. Make up the difference on what is lacking. Lord, in Jesus' name, we just come to you and we ask, Lord, that you would touch in an individual way, Lord, because you know us better than we even know ourselves, Lord. You know each individual, individual, Lord, whereas I am limited, Lord, in perspective and understanding and knowledge, Lord. You know the thoughts and hearts and intents of each and every one of us, Lord. You know the aches and pains that we bear in our bodies, Lord. You know uh, just what it is that we stand in need of in our lives. So we pray, Lord, that you would touch each individual one at a time, Lord, and that you would do your perfect and most holy work in our lives, Lord. Bless us today indeed, Lord. Uh, we have these requests of ours, Lord, and we pray that you would just bless us as we intercede and pray one for another, Lord. Supply it. Give it today, Lord. Do it today, Lord. Make a way out of no way, Lord. Open doors that are closed in our faces, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would just touch now. Lord, we pray that you would uh, let our hearts, Lord, be focused, concentrated on you, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would touch our hearts, Lord, and our minds, Lord, that we would follow the mind of Christ that we would follow the pattern that you've set forth when you walk here on earth through your son, Jesus the Christ, Lord. And that we would likewise, with humbleness of heart and mind, Lord, that we would uh, follow after your ways, Lord. Yeah. That we would do what you would do. That we would discern in our lives so that we can be perfect representations of good examples, Lord. Uh, to those who are, are looking to us, Lord, to see the Savior. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Heal those who are sick, those who are hurting, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would bless those who have financial needs in their lives, Lord. We pray the abundance of blessings upon each individual, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would touch, Lord, those who are making decisions in their lives and we pray that you would give wisdom and guidance and direction lord we pray for the children we pray for the youth and young adults lord we pray lord that you would bless the uh, seniors today bless now in jesus name lord in a very special way lord let us not leave here the same way that we came lord we pray that you would allow your divine presence and purpose upon our lives, Lord, and that we would hear your voice as you would speak to us from one day to the next. Lord, let us forever be faithful. Let us forever be consistent, Lord, as we trust you, Lord, to lead us like a savior and a shepherd that you are. Lord, we know that at the end of the day, when all is said and done, that you've got it all in control. So we trust you right now, Lord. Convict and convert those who have not yet accepted you as Lord and Savior of their lives. Yes. 
Lord, as we would prepare our hearts and minds to share and to receive your word as you would speak, Lord. Let us hear, Lord, deliberately and clearly, Lord, as you would share with us yes. the words of truth and life, Lord. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray and we ask it all. Lord, deliver, heal. Lord, give us victory today. Amen, amen. and amen. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are,
morning, amen, from uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3 and 4, particularly let us tune our minds into this fourth chapter, amen, verse 3. Uh, but we want to reference uh, these two chapters, and so let us leave our Bibles open in our laps as we go through the message uh, this morning. Amen. But even if our gospel is veiled, um, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the gods, the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe. Yes. Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Mm. I want to share with you this morning a relevant gospel. Amen. That's, that's the message uh, that we want to share this morning. And as we would leave this place, we would uh, take it with us uh, and remember it today. Uh, the gospel is certainly relevant uh, when we consider the idea, the concept of relevant. Uh, it's that which is closely connected that which has meaning uh, and depth into our lives. Uh, it's not something that's dangling on the peripheral, but it's something that uh, is certainly important and central uh, to all else that exists. And we are constantly in search for that which is relevant in our lives. Uh, we are we are looking for uh, relevancy, and oftentimes, as we would look for relevancy, uh, we would be in search of something new, something on the cutting edge. Uh, uh, but I want to share with you that uh, it's not necessary to make the gospel relevant, uh, because the gospel is already relevant. Uh, the gospel is more relevant than tomorrow's newspaper. And that'll hit you on the way home. Um, tomorrow's newspaper has not yet been printed. And yet, it's still, the gospel is more relevant than that. Uh, the gospel, uh, the good news uh, that God would share and unravel in front of our eyes. The good news uh, that a Savior has come into this world to live and to die uh, and to get up from the dead with all power in his hands. Uh, that gospel. Yeah, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Uh, the one who would sit at the right hand of the throne of God and he would wait until that precise moment when he would choose to come back. Yes, when the trumpet would sound and he would come to receive us, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet him in the end. That gospel, yes, the gospel is relevant to this day. And so that's what I want to share with you, a relevant gospel. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the gospel acknowledges God as the authoritative creator and owner of everything. The gospel would describe man uh, who lost his way in disobedience and uh, found himself with a sinful nature uh, with no way out or no way uh, to win on his own. We see this gospel that contains Jesus as the way out of our pitiful and sin-sick situation. Yes, the Savior and Lord who died for our sins. Yes, rose for our justification yes. and lived to make ongoing intercession, intercession offering up prayers for the believers. Yes, all the while he awaits our personal response to his invitation with outstretched arms 
that we would receive uh, the gospel that was shared to us. We would recall to mind the words of the prophet Isaiah as he would declare with a clarion call who will believe our report. Yes, uh, and so my brothers and sisters, uh, it's this gospel uh, that is relevant to us today uh, that would come to front of mind, to center of attention. Yes. yes, as we look out over the horizon and we see all that is wrong in this world, we see uh, that which is going left that which is out of control, that uh, which is off the rails. As we see individuals, uh, yes, uh, uh, who uh, have malice and evilness and spite in their hearts, as we would see individuals uh, who would abuse their authority and power, yes, as we would see, yes, uh, uh, those who would take advantage of other folk, uh, yes, mistreating, uh, using and abusing uh, those around them. Yes, uh, uh, my brothers and sisters, it leaves us uh, with questions. Uh, it leaves us wondering what is the answer? How is it that we would solve the problems of today? Well, I stand to share with you that we all turn our hearts and our minds and our attention back to the gospel. Yes, uh, the gospel is relevant uh, uh, for not only the concerns of yesterday, but it is also relevant for the concerns of today. As we would look around us and we would see what we see as we would experience what we experience in life. Uh, the gospel uh, is still the answer. It still holds the solution uh, to that which we face in this world. So my brothers and sisters, uh, as we would see, even as Paul would share and confess in that seventh chapter of Romans, uh, these words, he says, but sin taking opportunity by the commandment produced in me all manner of evil design. Yes. And as we look out in the world today, we still see evil design. All manner of evil design. Manner that goes beyond our imaginations, uh, all matters of evil desire, uh, so much and so that uh, those who are entrusted to enforce the law would uh, find themselves abusing the law uh, and taking advantage of the citizens to whom they are uh, commissioned to serve and protect. Yes, and, and we would see individuals who are elected, uh, yes, uh, to office in order to serve the people of their communities which they represent, uh, taking advantage of those same individuals. So, so much and so all manner of evil that we would see individuals who would lie uh, over and over again, mm -hmm. yes, in order to get elected to office and all of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, all manner of evil. Individuals who would, uh, yes, set off bombs, who would uh, take up arms and begin to shoot into a crowd. Individuals who would get a vehicle and mow down individuals as they would walk the streets. Individuals would display all manner of evil. Yes, uh, to the extent that uh, they would just hurl insults, lie on folk who would despise individuals who would try to hurt and harm others uh, who would come in that pathway. Just all manner of evil. Mm. 
I mean, we see it all around us. And, and as we would declare and cry out for answers and solutions, my brothers and sisters, we ought not overlook the obvious answer. Yes, we ought not overlook uh, what God has been sharing over the decades, over the centuries, trying to get our attention and to share with us that the answer is still written in the Holy Book. Yes, the answer is still written in his word. Mm. If we would crack it over. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, if we would look, yes, we would see that the gospel is relevant. The gospel is relevant because it contains its hope. I mean, it's relevant in its hope. It, 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 it would carry, yes, the solution for what we suffer from. Look at the text. Third chapter, that's 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 12. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face to so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. Mm -hmm. But their minds were blinded for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. Mm -hmm. Here, my brothers and sisters, lies the hope that is in this relevant gospel that we have today. The gospel is the only means and solution that would offer us an answer to get rid of the cloud, the veil uh, that would be rendered over our faces, that would not allow us to see uh, the full and complete glory of God that he would offer us. Amen. The gospel can take the veil away. Uh, he says the veil is taken away in Christ. Yes, yes. In this gospel. Yes. Uh, you see Moses. Uh, yes. After having had an experience and a conversation with God. Yes, you cannot enter into the presence of God without God getting on you. Yeah. Yes, and so after he would exit from uh, the face of God, the presence of God, there was a remaining glow that would be upon him uh, and to, 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 to secure uh, that glow and to not allow the people to see it as it would fade away from him. He would put a veil over him. And, and the scriptures would describe that this same veil was not only over the face of Moses, but this same veil would be over the hearts of the people. There would be something that was absent, something that was missing, that, something that was hidden from them. Mm. And Jesus Christ came into this world to give us just what was missing in our lives to get us closer, yes, to the glory of God. Yes, mm. yes, yes. That's why the gospel is relevant in its hope. Yes, it, it provides us hope that tomorrow can be better than yesterday, that we can move up higher than we were on yesterday. That we don't have to remain at the bottom of the stairs. That we can climb up one step at a time. That God can lift us up out of our circumstances, out of our situation, out of the evil that resides around us. If we would embrace this gospel. Um, listen. Listen. That 15th verse, but even to this day when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Um, it says that this veil 
continues on. But there is an answer. There's hope. The hope is in verse 16. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord. Can I get a witness? Amen. 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 When one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. All we have to do, yes, is to allow Jesus Christ to step into our life, into our circumstances, and he can snatch the veil away. That's what he's getting at. Uh, when we would see him at Calvary's cross, and as we would see him at Calvary's cross, uh, yes, the veil would be ripped from top to bottom. Yeah. It was God undoing that which would hide us from the glory of God. Um, you go into the tabernacle, and there was the veil that uh, would separate the Holy of Holies that only the great high priest would be allowed to enter in to offer up sacrifices for the sins of the people. But God would tear, he would rent the veil from top to bottom. Yes, yes. So much and so that Hebrews would remind us that we can now come boldly unto the throne of grace. Yes, God has provided for us an answer, yes, to the dilemma that we sit in. Mm. This gospel is relevant. And if you have not yet, we all take another look at the gospel. Yes, for certainly it can solve our situation. We've been running from one place to the other trying to find answers and solutions. I mean, we've been trying to pass one law after another law on top of a law. Mm. Yes, hoping that somehow or another, if we pass one more gun law, that there will be no more shootings. We've been trying to figure out if we could just uh, somehow or another uh, pass one more legislative act, uh, that that would solve the evil problem that we have in the world. But you all turn your face back to the book. Yes, and understand the, the depth of the evil that exists in the world and where it, it, it actually it comes from. Yes, it comes from man's sin problem, man's disobedience uh, uh, to God. Yes, that, that would allow us to find ourselves uh, dead in the middle of uh, all of this evil and chaos that we experience today. And, and if we want to get out of uh, the circumstances that we found ourselves trapped in, we, we all start pointing men to Calvary. We all start pointing women to Calvary. We all start pointing children and young people to Calvary. Uh, yes, we all start uh, early in life. Listen, as we look around us and we see individuals trying to enter into the schools, yes, uh, with young children, trying to indoctrinate them and, yes. and, and, and to, to, to brainwash them and, and, and to put all of this kind of craziness and foolishness into their minds and into their hearts at an early age. Mm long before they're ready to have yes. any of these kinds of conversations. Uh, yes, but they know what they're doing. Yes, yes uh, they're trying to insert all of this kind of craziness into them at an early age so that they won't be able to shake it off uh, later on in life. Yes, mm. Lord. yes there is a counter uh, to the culture. Yes, there is an answer on how it is that we can impact this generation uh, for a lifetime. Yes, we've got to go back to the book. We've got to go back to the gospel. Yes, we all hear the word of the Lord as he would say, train up a child in the way that he ought go. That's right. 
What the world is doing is simply trying to steal the playbook of God, but they're trying to use it in an adversarial way rather than an a godly way. Yes, uh, they're trying to train up the children, yes, uh, uh, to go in the way of the world. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, uh, yes, to lean on the hope of the word, uh, yes, and train our children uh, where it is that they all look in troubled times. Yes, uh, because the gospel has the transforming effect on our lives. Yes, yes. yes uh, my brothers and sisters, Moses was trying to obscure what was passing away. And that's like this generation trying alternative solutions other than the gospel. Mm -hmm. Trying solutions that ultimately will fail, ultimately will pass away. Uh, but I'm here today to share with you that the gospel still has relevancy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because when God would unveil our faces, God can cause us to walk in the newness of life. If we would but follow him. Yes. Listen. Ephesians is trying to help us. When he tells us. Uh, don't be drunk with wine. Wherein is excess. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's saying. We ought not be controlled. By. Liquor. We ought not in fact be controlled by. Anything. Yes, other than the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's when we are under the influence and the control and guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Yes, that we can make better choices, that we can rid ourselves of evilness in our hearts. Yes, it's the Holy Spirit Yes, who can cause us uh, to yield the fruit of the Spirit. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. I don't have time to pause there today, but you read Galatians. Yes, and you see the work of the Spirit in the life of the believer. Yes, if we would yield ourselves. Yes, to the Spirit of God. Look at verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes, God can set us free. Yes. Moses did what the others did not have the opportunity to do. He went before the Lord with an unveiled face. Yes, Exodus 34, 34 says, But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take off, take the veil off until he came out. Yes, he had an opportunity to get into the very presence of God. But I want you to know today, my brothers and sisters, there is hope because you and I can, as Moses did, can enter into the Holy of Holies we can enter into the very place, place of God. But we, we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. God can do it for us. Yes, God can unveil our faces. God can unveil our hearts. Yes, God can get us in the presence of God where we can see him as he is. Amen. The same glory Moses experienced temporarily behind the veil is what each believer in Christ anticipates as an eternal experience. Yes. 
Simply put, for if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Yes, uh, God shares with us uh, the relevancy of the gospel is that it provides hope for spiritual transformation if we want to see evil, evil and malice uh, fall away out of individuals' lives, if we want to see individuals do better and grow in their lives and in their walk, uh, yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, it will only come as a result of experience the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. It's relevant, yes, in its hope. It's relevant in its reach. Um, listen, there are those who would attempt uh, in their self-destructing ways to alter or to suppress the gospel. But my brothers and sisters, I want you to understand this. Look at the text in this fourth chapter. Um, Verse 3, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe. The reason why we must understand the relevancy of the gospel is because if we fail to see it, if we fail to apply it, yes, uh, it's those individuals who need it the most, uh, yes, whose reach it can touch for the good that we veil it from. Um, it would prevent the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. It would prevent him from shining on them. Yes, uh, this gospel. Let, let, let's see if we can take it step by step and piece by piece. This gospel is relevant to those who are perishing. Yes. Mm. There are individuals who are daily dying, self-destructing. Uh, they're tripping all over themselves, can't get out of their own way. Individuals who are in desperate need of God. Yes, and, and if my brothers and sisters, we would decide that we would keep it to ourselves, if we would decide that we would hide it under a bushel, if we would decide that, that I can't talk about uh, religion in front of other folk, uh, yes, if we would decide that, that we would just keep it in the four corners of these walls, uh, yes, if we would decide, uh, yes, that we would not to shout. Well, my Lord. Hmm. Folk will continue in their self-destructive ways. Yes, yes. We'll continue to see the school shootings. We'll continue to see, yes, folk walking into malls and supermarkets, uh, yes. yes, unleashing and unravishing all manner of evil. Oh, we have a relevant gospel Yes, uh, and its reach is even to those who are living lives that are full of malice. Recall the message uh, just earlier as we would talk about the unchurch. We would talk about Paul who was going forth, yes, uh, destroying the lives of believers thinking that he was doing God a favor. Yes, uh, but because the reach of the gospel came to Paul's door, his life was turned around, and instead of persecuting the church, he became the one who would push the church. Mm. The gospel is relevant to those who are perishing the gospel is relevant to those who have blinded minds. 
There's so many individuals who have allowed the God of this world to blind their minds and they're searching behind this God and that God, all these little gods that they are running behind, trying to make gods out of statues, gods of wood, gods of precious metal, trying to create gods that would be relevant to them, not realizing that, that the most relevant gospel is right in front of their eyes. Romans 1 21 says because although they knew God they did not glorify him as God nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened have you ever bumped into anybody lately the walking blind yeah just bumping into everything and anybody and everything Yes, can't tell where they're going, whether they're coming or going. Yes, uh, because their minds are blinded. Mm. Looking and searching for hope in the earth, looking and searching for hope in the elements, looking and searching for hope in everything. Uh, yes, but in all the wrong places. It was well stated by Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown in their commentary. The veil on Moses' face is further typical of the veil that is on their hearts. The veil on Moses' face is one thing. But to have our hearts veiled, shielded, covered, unable to see the glory of God is another thing. Mm -hmm. Listen, the gospel can reach even a blinded heart. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. That's why we've got to ensure that we would take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Allow it to reach where God is intending for it to reach. The gospel even has a reach into the hearts of those who do not believe. That's why he says that if our gospel is here, it's here to look from those who do not believe. It's relevant. It's the center of the conversation. It's not a secondary thought. But it's the primary concern for this world in which we live. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says this, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Why is there so much recklessness in the world today? Because they cannot discern spiritual things. Mm. That's why evil would prevail in those who do not have the guidance of God, who are not under the influence and control of the Holy Spirit. They cannot discern spiritual things. But we have a relevant gospel that can reach them. I know many of us had that same experience that, that Paul had. I'm talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23. Yes, uh, he says, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, foolishness. Mm. There are those who are stumbling over the gospel. There are individuals who are proclaiming that they know more than God. Well, but my brothers and sisters, the gospel is still relevant. Yeah, yeah, it's real. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Even to those who think they know more than God, to those who refuse to believe the gospel is still relevant. Yeah, my Lord. 
even to them. God can cause jealous who are working to imprison a Paul, a Peter, a Silas. Yes, to be converted. Can I get a witness? Yes, God can call, yes, a Nebuchadnezzar to see that there is a God. Yes, uh, and so my brothers and sisters, there is still hope because we have a relevant gospel that has reach. I mean, it's that individual that you never would have thought would come to the Lord. I mean, it's that cousin, it's that uncle. Yes, yes that, 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 that has so much rage in their hearts and their minds were just so out there. Yes, uh, I mean it's that it's that individual that 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 is a functioning alcoholic. Uh, yes, uh, I, I mean they 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 can go through a whole day and and go to work and come back and they've been drunk the whole day. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's some of those individuals that, that, that we have given our own turned our backs on and we walk away from. Yeah. Yes, that, that the gospel can reach. It's relevant and we ought to continue to share and allow the light of the gospel to shine. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, I know the champions of Darkness are eager to suppress the gospel. Um, yes, uh, but we ought to share it nonetheless. Yes. We ought to say, yes. like those in ages ago, this is a little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. I mean, when we would shine the good news of the gospel, I mean, there's just something about light. I mean, it's like roaches scrambling at midnight when the lights come on. I mean, God has that kind of effect on evil. Yes, uh, God, when he would come into the midst of this reckless world in which we live, God can shine light on all of it. It's no wonder that so many are afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's no wonder that there are so many individuals who are trying best they can to suppress the gospel. Yes. Who are trying to usher prayer out of school. Yes, yes uh, who, who don't want even the Psalms to be read in poetry class. Yes, yes uh, I, I understand why it is that there are so many folk who don't want to see nativity scenes on the corner of the block at Christmas time. Uh, yes, uh, because my brothers and sisters, where light is, darkness has to flee. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 yes it does. Thank you, Lord. Yes. The gospel is relevant in its hope. Gospel is relevant in its reach. And the gospel is relevant in its person. Mm. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Look at verse 5, the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. The center and circumference of the gospel is Jesus the Christ. He is Lord, He is Savior. Yes, we don't preach ourselves, that would be futile. But we preach. One who is relevant as much today as he was, uh, yes, on yesterday. Jesus Christ is the gospel personified. Mm. Yes, uh, he is the creator, uh -huh. the authoritative God. Yes, when he speaks, things come into existence. Yes. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, the, the first light uh, would shine upon the world in which we live because God would say, let there be light. Let there be light. Uh, you just look back at Genesis 1 and 3. 
Yes, out of nothing, God created something. From the dust of the earth, uh, God created humanity, and he would breathe into man the breath of life. God is that light. That light that God will shine on all of humanity. Yes, it's out of the person of God yes. that we would see that light radiating and shining all over the world. Yes, That's what 1 John 1 and 5 is getting at. It says this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Yes, the hope that we have for the degenerative nature of humanity is to find our way back to the gospel. That's the answer. Yes, that's the hope for the lost. That's the hope for the reckless and the evilness of this world. Matthew 4, 16 says it like this. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Yes. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. That's the answer. Yes, uh, we need more of the gospel, not less. Yes, uh, we don't need to hide the gospel. We need to share it. Uh, we don't need to put it underneath anything. We need it to put above everything. Amen. Yes, Lord Jesus. God would have us to walk in that light. Again, over in 1 John 1 and 7, he says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin God is encouraging us God is prompting and pushing us yes. towards the light yes because it's only light that eradicates darkness and when we see the chaos and calamity in the world yes we all shine light on it But not only ought we point people to the light of God, not only ought we to walk in light, yes, uh, but we ought to allow ourselves, uh, yes, to be what we would call a lampstand. We ought to allow ourselves to, to be a beacon of light that would sit on a hill for all to see. When riding on the water in the darkness. Huh. Yeah, yeah. In order to get back to the docks, in order to get into the marina, uh -huh. it's light yes. that would guide you home. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. You're looking for the lighthouse. You're looking for the red and the green. You're looking for navigational lights uh, to help get you back to where you want to be. My brothers and sisters, the world is looking for navigational lights. They're trying to find their way. They're in search of the answer. And my brothers and sisters, we have the best answer. We have a relevant gospel. that can guide them safely to the docks. That's why Matthew 5 and 14 says it like this. You are the light of the world. A city that is set yes. on a hill cannot be hidden. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yes. Later on, a couple of verses down, he says this in 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. 
Yes, my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is light. Yes, but as we've said earlier, he's also liberty. John 8, 32 says, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. God has freedom that he wants to allow individuals to be able to walk in newness of life. Right here in the 17th verse, third chapter, he says, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's what God is offering. God wants to set free minds that are ravaged with evil. God wants to set free men and women, boys and girls found themselves without any hope, without any direction, nowhere to turn. Well, there is somewhere to turn. It's in the gospel. The gospel is relevant. It's relevant in its hope. It's relevant in its reach. And it's relevant in its person. My brothers and sisters, the gospel carries the answer. It's as relevant today as it was on yesterday and as it will be on tomorrow. Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. My brothers and sisters, we can turn it over to the Lord. If you know someone who's still searching, who's still looking for answers. You know someone who's still harboring hatred in their life. Allow them to see the gospel. It's relevant to their circumstances and their situation. Share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. It can make the difference in their lives. Point them towards the work of the Holy Spirit in their life, that they may bear the fruit of the Spirit. It's relevant. If we want to see change, it begins with the gospel. And if we want to see a move of God, it begins with us. One person at a time. Thank you, Lord, for this day, and we thank you, Lord, for your gospel. Yes, Lord. Lord, as we would prepare our hearts and our minds, Lord, we pray that you would cause individuals to come to you just as they are, that you would find, allow them to find hope and healing and help yes. in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 How we thank you now, Lord, as we pray one for another. We pray you would hear every request, Lord, that you would better the life of the individual in front of us and back of us, on the side of us, Lord. We pray for every individual under the sound of my voice, Lord, those who are watching remotely, Lord. We pray your blessings upon them. Bless them now. They're going out and they're coming in. Lord, until we meet again, Lord, we pray that the blood of Jesus Christ would continue to cover us and bless our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say, Amen. Amen.